For those of you who don't know, I actually film for a living and edit for a living and I actually film and edit loads of other YouTubers videos as well as my own and I edit stuff for television so I thought I'd tell you how I film these videos because you keep asking me and it's much easier to just say here's a video on it. First up, I'm going to talk about my equipment. There are three cameras I use on my channel at the moment. That is my Canon 60D, my Canon G7X and my iPhone 5S. Let's take those one by one. This is what I'm using right now to film this video and I also use it to film loads of other people's videos, although I do want to upgrade the camera body. I'll get on to why in a minute. But this camera is still quite good. I use it to film stuff for broadcast television, so I'm gonna say it's all right. I love my G7X. I've only had it about two or three weeks and I've been using it to film the last two videos I did and I thoroughly recommend it. It's a pointed shoot that starts at about 300 if you can find it online but it seems to go for about five to 600 otherwise. It does full HD slow-mo, it's got excellent picture taking and you can like flip the screen up as well so you can take good selfies and it will connect to your iPhone so you can post them on Instagram. I really love this camera and I actually think it's a little better than my 60E which is why I I kind of want to upgrade it because I feel like it's just a little, it's a little soft. Canons do shoot a little soft just so you know, the actual DSLRs, you need to sharpen them in post. That is a little editing tip. Wasn't meant to put that here but I'm gonna. Last up is my iPhone 5S which I was filming all my vlogs on up until a couple of weeks ago before the Xanti vlog. Xanti vlog was like G7X gorgeousness. I love it so much. And the reason I got the G7X is because the camera battery on my iPhone was so bad I was like whatever, I'm gonna get something that looks prettier. Done. I have three lenses right now. I have the one I'm filming on right here, which is the 17 to 40 f-stop 4.0. It's a zoom lens and I love it. I use it for everything. This is actually what I use for television or if I need to zoom in or widen at any given moment. I like it for shoots that tend to be a bit unpredictable and I can just get that shot right there and then. Very good lens. Thank you very much. I of course have the 18 to 55 kit lens, which came with my camera. It's a very good lens for beginners. I can't fault it. It's just not this one, but I do like it. I've always kept it. It's just, it's a backup. It's a very good backup. I only have two zoom lenses. Last up, I have my 50 mil 1.4 lens. I absolutely adore this, but because of my cropped sensor, it actually is more of an 80 millimeter. For this reason, I'm actually gonna be investing in a 30 millimeter because it will look just as beautiful and pretty. And I think I'll just get more out of it at self shooting. I can't really shoot myself on the 50 millimeter, but I shoot almost everything else and everyone else on it. It's just a shame I can't shoot my content with it. By the way, the 30 and 50 millimeter lenses you just can zoom they are fixed point lenses which means to zoom you need to go closer to the target and to not zoom you need to get further away but they are stunning and it's usually how you're able to create the effect of the blurry background which by the way is called shallow depth of field but I'll get onto that in a minute one last thing I want to talk about with lenses is they are an investment lenses should last a lifetime whereas camera bodies they tend to be built like tanks and replaceable every few years so if you're going to buy a DSLR I recommend you spend the money on the lens and maybe get a cheaper camera body because I think you'll get more out of your content that way. Most beginners can get the 700D, I think it's called in the UK at least, camera, and I think they have a lower model as well. Both of those are great beginner cameras, but invest in your lenses and then your content should look really pretty. Problem is, is that lenses are expensive, but now you know. In regards to lighting, I usually shoot these kind of videos here with natural light because I have my window right there and a reflector right here which is bouncing light back onto this part of my face. Shooting using daylight like today, it's cloudy which means I'm never really going to get overexposed. The light might change slightly but it'll always look nice and diffused whereas shooting on a sunny day is really really hard and then you might need to use your reflector as a diffuser, which you can do. But reflectors tend to go really stupidly cheap, like about £10 on Amazon is how I got mine and I love it so much much it's like a basic to my kit and also you can reflect different colored lights on someone and make it look really pretty and artsy they're just necessary if you can't get hold of a reflector though just put tin foil up on a stick if you can and try and bounce light that way it works equally as well and it's super budget friendly doing stuff with a camera being my job I actually have some professional equipment as well I came into two amazing LED light panels which are really expensive and are only an investment if it is your job I'm telling you this now but they are incredible because I can put filters on that adjust the light temperature on them it's a lot like gels on hot lights these are cold lights so they never heat up the room everything looks great and they tend to flood the room with light and I use them a lot of my clients for when we're in dark bedrooms if you're wondering what filters that I use I just tend to use the clear white one it diffuses the LED light bulbs and it looks really nice and soft 
In regards to sound, I actually record it separately. Hello. Hello, I'm even closer and louder now. That's where my microphone is. It isn't on top of my camera like most people's is with a Rode mic. There isn't anything wrong with a Rode mic, but I feel like it gets a lot of noise from the camera because the camera uses its auto gain and it's not pretty, whereas this is much clearer and I can sync it up in post. I recommend if you can do that, do that. I'm using a H4n, there are much cheaper alternatives available, but I also will be upgrading to a H6. And I do use the Rode mic that plugs in, but I just tend to use it as a backup in case my H4 will fail, especially on shoots where we're getting interviews live and we can't repeat them, for example, for television stuff. That wasn't the best sentence, but you know what I mean. Other random bits I have as part of my kit is I have several light stands. This is for my light stands. I could put my GE7X on them as well. I could put my audio recorders on them. They're very, very useful pieces of equipment just to stick stuff on because a lot of camera gear tends to come with a little bit on the top that you can screw it in. I also have three tripods, which I know is excessive, but I have one professional boss one that's absolutely incredible that I came into with from a friend again. It's just how I've managed to get loads of my equipment very, very luckily. The tripod I'm actually using for this video right now is 30 years old and it's doubling up as a jewelry stand. It was made for an old point-and-shoot camera, nothing really heavy like my uh, DSLR, but it's actually doing the job pretty fine so I've kept it and that was only about £15 I think when we got it. The other tripod I tend to use the most is also slightly more heavy duty, like a good mix in between, but it's kind of not as good as the other one in regards to it doesn't have all the levels on it but I recommend getting a tripod with a little water bubble level thing I forgot the word right now but it's very very useful for things like filming because I have a wonky house and I have always got something straight with that leveler. If you can't afford to get one with a little water leveler, which I do recommend, the camera actually usually has a setting which lets you see a little line go across the screen and it's really useful because I have to use it for this tripod. I also have a camera rig, this is to shoot stuff outside, usually in press pits because people will knock you and this will stay more steady than my hands and keep the camera more away from me so I can attach it if I fall, which has happened. I've caught the camera as I've fallen because of this rig. It's very good and it acts a bit like a steady cam, but it is not a steady cam rig. I am hopefully gonna invest in one of those in the next year as well. I'm almost always a one person camera crew. I've got two cameras on tripods right here and I can kind of monitor them because I've got flip up screens, which is quite cool. I also do this with clients. I'll usually set the main camera up to focus on the person from one angle and then I'll be filming on the side more handheld. It gives a different mix and a really good vibe to a video. If I want something handheld when I'm filming on my own, I'll just do that in post and make it look like there's someone else there when there's not. However, if I have to shoot outside, I typically have to kind of bribe a friend on board. Like my housemate Bing when we were filming on a train, because I wanted to show people how I did my eyeliner on a train, I bought him a coffee afterwards because that was not enough payment, but it's all I could do that day. You've probably already learnt this from Instagram and not even know, but you can split the camera into thirds. Your eyes should usually cross about the top third part, even if it means that your head is slightly cut off. It works so much better, trust me on this one. But you also don't want to have them too high because it looks really weird, just so you know. It's usually better to have your subject slightly offside than dead in centre. It just feels more friendly, like you're being chatted to. I've done dead centre stuff though and it's also worked. It kind of depends on the content you're creating. You remember when I was talking about shallow depth of field? So actually I'm super close to this background I can literally touch it but my stuff over there is blurry and that's just because I'm further away from it. Lenses like a 30mm or a 50mm or an 80mm will help you achieve that because it will focus on the one point you want it to and nothing else. But essentially in three steps is lower aperture on camera, subject closer to camera, subject away from background and that's all you need. Lastly I want to talk about the art of b-roll which I feel like is only just starting to get used a lot in content and I really like that. B-roll is is essentially your second lot of content. It's not the main one of me talking, but it's like the shots of my cameras. It creates interest in the video, and I love it so much. And that is how I film my videos and other people's videos on YouTube. It was probably one of my most requested videos in my comments. The only other one I can think of that's equally as popular is people wanna know how I edit my videos. And I can do a basics kind of editing thing. Just let me know in the comments down below if there's anything you want, and I'm thinking of doing one to two minute videos on editing basics. If you want to know, also before I go, this video didn't go out to sub boxes. I spent a lot of time on that video. It's a vlog. I really like it. It has lots of my friends in it, MCM and Beautycon. So don't forget to check that out. And if you liked this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want to subscribe, you can subscribe for more. I will make more stuff. I try to be 
regular. I'm gonna say regular because if I say weekly, it's like jinxing it. Anyway, I'm gonna wait for you to click here. Don't worry, we've got all the time in the world. And then I'll switch off the camera. It's a mighty fine video though. You haven't clicked it. You know what, we should just go. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna switch this off. Goodbye.